Is it totally an accident that you and I even exist? Is the whole fact of our existence or the whole fact of our the existence of a planet on which we live, which is 3.8 billion years old, in a universe that began 13.8 billion years ago, what's the statistical probability of you and I actually even existing? So there's a school of thought that says, you know, everything from the beginning of time at this moment is a series of accidents, a highly improbable event, a conspiracy of total improbabilities, total randomness and total chance. So that's one school of thought. But another school of thought, and that goes back literally 2,500 years to the time of Buddha, says that nothing, nothing is random. That what we call accident or random is actually a synchronistic interdependent co-arising of events and relationships since the beginning of time. And that this is the nature of consciousness. That consciousness has the ability to synchronistically, interdependently give rise to an infinity of space-time events. And what we call random or accident is because with bits and, bits and pieces of our sensory experience, we cannot comprehend the whole. That's why Buddha makes a very strong distinction between what is perception and what is seeing, which other people have done too. William Blake says, we are led to believe a lie when we see with and not through the eye that was born in the night to perish in the night while the soul slept in beams of light. So there's a whole different school of thought. And today, one of the major, major attempts in science is to understand the nature of our consciousness. What gives rise to consciousness? Is it just a secretion of our brains? We know that the gallbladder produces bile, the pancreas makes pancreatic juice, the stomach creates hydrochloric acid. Is, is our consciousness just a product of our brain? Is it just the dance of molecules? or synaptic firings in your brain that give rise to thought, to feelings, to emotions, to memories, to fantasies, to dreams? Or is consciousness primary and gives rise to our brain activity? Is it the other way around? Does the brain produce consciousness or does consciousness affect the brain? And there's a whole school of thought right now, the whole school of thought that says that consciousness is the ground of being that differentiates into everything that we call reality, that reality is a projection of consciousness. That consciousness simultaneously differentiates into your thoughts, into your cognition, into your perception, into your behavior, into your personal relationships, into your biology, into your social interactions, into your environment, and ultimately even into the forces of nature. That's another school of thought. A few years ago, I had um, a conference at our center in California where we invited some of the most fundamental particle physics scientists in the world, including the head of the Max Planck Institute in Germany and many other places, and uh, including some really good academics, and we asked them to define for us, or at least give us some idea into the scientific view of what consciousness might be, other than the materialistic interpretations that we have from the likes of, say, Richard Dawkins or, or Daniel Dennett, who, 